Hey everyone, Yalda here. I'm a UI UX designer and online educator with over 20 years of experience in graphic design. I'll be your Figma instructor and I'm excited to guide you through mastering Figma. We'll be using the free version of Figma so everyone can jump in and start designing. In today's video, we'll be creating a responsive header component using local variable. As always, you can find the practice file in description below and follow along. All right, let's get started. First, we are gonna create a frame and set the size to 1440 by 100, which will be our desktop header dimensions. We'll name it header. Next, we'll select all the header contents that I've already created and drag them into the header frame. Now I'll right click on the frame, go to the more layout options and select suggest auto layout. And there you go. Figma has automatically created these new frames with little blue dots for us. If we extend the width of the header, you'll see that it keeps its responsiveness. Next, let's select our header and turn it into a component. I'll drag the hamburger menu icon into our header component, then head over to the properties panel and click on local variables. I'm gonna rename the existing collection. I'll name it header. Now let's create a new variable. As you can see, there are four different types of variables you can create. I'll select number and name it desktop because this will be the width for our desktop header. The slash will help organize it into a group called width with desktop as the variable inside that group. Let's set the value to 1440. Next, I'm going to create another number variable, name it tablet, and set its value to 744. Finally, let's create a third variable, call it mobile, and set the value to 390. Once that's done, we can close the local variable window and head back to our header component. I'm gonna double click on one of the menu items to go inside the component. In the properties panel under appearance, I'll create a boolean component property. Name it menu items and set the value to true. Then I'll select the hamburger menu icon, create another boolean component property name it menu icon and set the value to false. You'll notice the hamburger menu icon is now hidden. Now I'm gonna select the header component, hold on the option key on Mac or the alt key on Windows and drag it into the desktop frame to create a copy while keeping the original in place. We'll do the same thing for the tablet frame, then we'll go to the auto layout properties, click on width, select apply variable and choose tablet. It looks a bit messy right now, but we're gonna fix it in a minute. Let's repeat the process for the mobile frame as well. Now let's tidy up our headers. At the top of the properties panel, go to the component setting, Turn off the menu items and instead turn on menu icon. Perfect. But we still need to make a small adjustment. The padding in the headers doesn't look quite right. We can fix this by using variable as well. To do that, we'll go back to local variables and create a new number variable. Let's type padding slash desktop to keep everything grouped properly. I'm gonna set the value to 152. Then I'll create another variable for the tablet padding 
and set it to 32. The last one will be the mobile padding with a value of 16. Because I didn't use the slashes, the variables aren't grouped correctly, but that's easy to fix by dragging them into the right groups. Perfect. Now let's apply these padding variables to our selected headers. I'm going to select the tablet header, go to the auto layout settings. I'm gonna hit the variable icon next to it and choose tablet. We'll do the same for the right padding and now our header looks much better. We need to repeat the process for the mobile and desktop. And that's it. We finished creating our responsive headers in just a few minutes. Now let's see how they adapt to different device sizes. To do that, we'll use a plugin called Breakpoints. We're gonna go to Plugins and open the Breakpoint plugin. Now click on New Adaptive Layout. We need to add two more breakpoints. So let's go ahead and do that. Now you'll see it provides three potential screen sizes in between these breakpoints. Let's set them up. Change the second one to around 4.98, the third one to 9.91, and the last one to 14.40. Next, we're gonna assign the frames. For the smallest screen, choose the mobile frame, then select the tablet frame for the next one, and finally, the desktop frame for the largest. And there you have it. You can see how our header changes to fit different screen sizes. I hope you learned something new about local variables and responsive design in Figma. If you enjoyed this tutorial, hit the like button and subscribe for more UI UX content. Drop your questions in the comment. I read every single one and love hearing from you. All right, until next time, keep designing, stay creative, and I'll see you in the next video.